Am I a billionaire yet? No. Do I have $35,000 and a dream? Absolutely. Soon all this land will be ours. But for now, we got some bales. We got a bale loader. We got a couple more harvests this year. Let's get back to it. Not to give away too much my time scale here, but so five fully edited. Just waiting to go live here. Uh, I've had a lot of fun doing this challenge and I'm really happy everybody's been enjoying it so much. Appreciate all the support. If you love my marshmallows and you've just been enjoying the series, please consider subscribing to the channel. Been having a lot of fun trying to figure this all out, maybe making a few mistakes along the way, but what kind of series is it without people messing up a bit along the way, right? More entertaining when they uh, waste all their money buying a bunch of needless stuff. <laughs> Those are the best kind of series. Then they gotta claw their way out. You gotta hear the misery in their voice as they realize they don't have enough money to buy a giant field. <laughs> Just like me. I actually really do like how everything's shaping up. A little bit of a basic uh, little homestead setup, but I really enjoy it. Kind of weird we're behind someone else's house there, but I mean, I like it. We got that little yard. The, the greenhouse, beehive, chicken coop all next to each other. Just look really nice. I really enjoy that. I love the way that chicken coop Coop looks really ties it all together just a little farm setup but i enjoy it a lot and this field's actually pretty pretty big wrapping up our harvest here last couple marshmallows that is it i'll probably just get right over to the other field and start loading get the dual tractor action you know it's my favorite might have heavily influenced my decision to get a second tractor and i think that it's actually been a very good purchase it was a really good way to get that second tractor set up but also allow me to get all the things with pallets which i had, I had been wanting to do in the challenge but just didn't didn't really want to buy a forklift, you know? Hadn't been wanting to do that. This is where the transport gets a little more fun because I'm not right on the same property as my storage shed no more. I drive all the way over here. One downside of a of a disjointed farm. But we'll be spreading out eventually, so I'm not too bothered by all this. With the round bales, you just make so many. Round bales don't have a huge capacity to them, so we end up just making so many. I like our baler, but we'll see what we can do to replace it. The other thing I was thinking about is... Some of the other setups can actually do additives to the silage, which is a 5% bonus right there. So that alone might be a good enough reason to swap on over one of these times. Probably will be doing a little bit of extra bailing, clean up these spots that have been missed, both on this field and the, the field over there. But we can do that once we get all these loaded up. Might as well utilize the double tractors while we have them. Hired help really isn't too expensive, all things considered. Okay, ghost bale. Apparently my bales are haunted too now. Use a little path or something going in here just to make it a bit more obvious through these trees. I can't always remember where the chicken coop is. Okay, or I just send my fork right into a tree like that. That goes sometimes. Okay, we adapt, we improve, we overcome. We are filling up that storage. It's really the pallets that send it over the edge these days. Look at all of them lining up there in the front. Although we do have just a crazy amount of marshmallows. Yeah, we're missing a lot of stuff here. Mm, I'm probably just gonna have to go back through anyways. Man, I just stabbed my own uh, bale there. He's missing so much, I might even just... Uh, why don't I take this guy over? You are dismissed, sir. Oh, I just realized that extra pass on the side is uh, from <laughs> me mowing the meadows. That's funny. I was wondering why he was missing that. Okay, well. Got a bale perfectly stuck. That is... <laughs> That's something. That's one way to get that grass I missed, I suppose. Drive a lot faster down these uh, windrows, mostly because the dude we paid... Uh, oh! Dude we paid was only getting about half of the windrows, so we are cruising down these things now. It's a lot different than what I'm used to here. <laughs> used to the very, very, very slow speeds. Yeah, a bit slower on this one. Still faster, though because there's less grass here. You can tell that's the difference between fertilized planted grass and little grass you find between the uh, fields here. Massive difference in yield. Oh, we're making bales out of it regardless, so it's worth doing. Still a decent amount of yield here. It's funny how I can estimate roughly how much we're getting just by how fast I'm able to drive. <laughs> Looks like that dude did fill up. 
just be doing this ourselves. There's really not too much more to do. We should probably be getting this other side too, honestly. Mow it all up. Been pretty common for me to hire them for the mowing specifically, just because I feel like it's pretty hard for them to mess up. Usually I'm doing something else right at the start of the harvest day, like setting up the AI, doing pallet work, refilling the greenhouse, that sort of stuff. So it's been a it's been a common job for them. We're just cruising here. This is a crazy far cry from how it is on our other field. So final pass, the first harvest of year three. It's an exciting time. But the first harvest especially of the year is just so great. This will probably be the final bale. I mean, while he grabs him, I suppose we could get that that tiny little trail there. It might put us over the edge for one more bale. Ooh, I almost forgot. We need to get fertilized as well. Get this taken on back to the home base. And I'll get him fertilizing on the other field. And then I'll come finish this bale loading. And then we'll fertilize this guy. And that'll be it. A successful first day of harvest there. We need to come back through and clean some of these up one of these times. Definitely just missing little, little chunks here and there. And by we, I mean the AI worker. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, this storage shed definitely gonna fill up by the end of the year. Yet another harvest. The books. Now, seeing an issue here. <laughs> if I don't reset this myself, they won't reset the uh, working width. All right, well, we wasted a little bit of uh, fertilizer there, but that's okay. Now let's get this repaired and refueled. Head on down to the gas station, brother. Oh boy, going right by the gas station. We call uh, looking at your phone while you're driving. I shouldn't be doing. Let's be real here. I'm gonna do it in farming sim. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Going in the gas station, get me a snack. What's your snack? Corn nuts? You say hot dog. I know you ain't right. Big lug? Yo, get me a Slurpee in there, man. Icy. Want me an icy? Maybe a frizzy spizz extreme? If I had to go with one snack in there. Well, corn nuts are pretty good. Those are like such a classic. It's probably not my go to. Maybe some of the cheesy ones would be my go-to usually but you know what sounds really good right now some like ranch ones kind of like uh cool ranch doritos with some corn nuts that sounds real good right about now for this here road trip down the road i mean i know them corn nuts when you reach into the like the cup holder in your tractor i know them i know them corn nuts taste delicious oh man middle of a long working day Ooh, he's just barely gonna have enough just barely. I have some solid fertilizer at the vehicle store. Best buds with the uh, vehicle store manager there. He's done so much business with me and I live right across the street. In fact, we're such good buddies. We got margaritas at the Mexican spot right there and some tacos. And a taco sounds good right now. Burrito maybe. Oh man, if you don't have yourself a good burrito spot near you, I'm not talking about Chipotle. Chipotle, if you got nothing else, if you got nothing else, you can go there. But you got a good local burrito place you can go to, you go there tonight. Do it for me. You let me know how good that thing is too. You deserve it. <laughs> and I know that thing good. Man, now I want me a burrito. And it is far too late for me to be eating a burrito here. I probably won't do it, but I certainly want one. Is it ever really too late for a burrito, man? Come on. Right after I said that, that's what I thats what I was thinking. It's never too late for a burrito, let's be real here. Now tacos versus burritos, now that is a quandary because they are both so delicious in so many ways. I just don't even know how to begin to tackle that one. I guess it depends on what kind of taco versus burrito because some burritos, there's actually they're actually more convenient to eat, you know? Because they're all contained, all self-contained. You gotta pour the salsa on them a lot of times. Not all the time, but sometimes you get get the little bottles of salsa and you take a bite and take a little take a little pour on that next bite and it, it is so good. Now tacos, they can they can be more convenient too, but sometimes you get the toppings, you know, they're really loaded tacos, and you gotta you gotta like make sure everything doesn't fall out the back. And they are delicious, but it can be a little more inconvenient. The type of burritos I'm getting, I think the convenience actually actually might go to the burrito. These are more like on the go burrito. I'm not talking wet burrito you'd be eating with a fork, although those are delicious too. Now taste, I feel like with a taco, you can get a lot more of an undiluted flavor. The burritos, a lot of times they'll have the rice and the beans and while it's delicious, sometimes it can muddy the flavors of the other stuff in there. I think taste might actually go to tacos, so it's one to one right now. You can put a little sauce on both, but I, I have to admit that sauce that, that sauce you can put in a burrito it's hard to beat that, I must admit. There's just something about the way it gets encompassed by all the tortilla around it. Oh, it's so good. Man, 
I need me a burrito. Been talking about burritos longer than just about anything else so far in this. Uh, <laughs> really didn't think seeing a random Mexican restaurant in a farming simulator game would prompt me to talk about burritos for so long, but here we are. Honestly, not that surprising. I, I, I end up talking about burritos pretty much at any chance I get. Alrighty, both fields fertilized, ready for next harvest. All right, we'll bring this around. I do believe that's the end of June for us. Open uh, by June year four. We got a certain field over there. That'd be lovely. I don't really see that happening, but maybe. Just maybe. Suppose I'll do my regular pallet unload, and that's about it for this month, honestly. Don't want to be doing too much between harvests. Chickens haven't quite made a full pallet, but it does look like we got a full pallet of honey, so. Just the farm busy work every month. Gotta go handle that. The upgrade to a semi someday, bigger scale storage, an old shed there. It's exciting to think about how things might look more in an end game fashion. Right now I'm fighting for about hundreds of thousands of dollars. Someday in the series it's gonna be hundreds of millions, or at least millions. That's the hope at least. <laughs> yeah, thinking about how that might be looking when we're just breaking in millions rather than, you know, tens or twenties of thousands. Hopefully we'll have multiple farm operations going. Some of them just more or less fully automated. Probably an easier way to automate than doing bales we got here, but someday we'll do some forage wagon. It seems like the best way to scale up for long, long term, but just gotta focus on the shorter term, getting these fields going, just increasing that profit margin per year. Oh boy. Looked up from my phone. I'm an AI worker on a little go-to, and uh, this is what I see. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's about right, I suppose. Oh man, there's a combine on his side, on a bridge. Uh, this is this is farming sim right here. The sideways farmer and all. This is exactly what the game is all about right here. Take a look. <laughs> all these AI workers buzzing on by. Five of them just right there. Okay. Kinda getting pretty close to each other too, huh? Oh boy, this is not gonna go well. Oh! Oh my, jeez. <laughs> that combine though. Go for it, big guy. Oh, wow, all right. <laughs> Same combine and everything. Oh man, that's awesome. Oh, brush the ground a little bit there. Jeez, going up the fire department, huh? Scaling the wall. Spider-Man combine. It's even red and everything. So did get a fancy new little ad on here for our contract menu. Better contracts. Seemed like a neat mod. It's kind of made contracts more interesting. Not necessarily more powerful, but definitely more interesting. Tells you a little more about what they need and also apparently offsets them. <laughs> Most importantly, it lets me get rid of them plowing contracts that I just do not want at all. A lot more information here, but it's nothing too crazy. Yeah, we'll just get these pallets loaded up. I think stored away. I don't, it's not the selling season for any of our products. So get loading here. It looks like we have quite a few things to grab. Full pallet of eggs, full pallet of honey, and obviously our whole suite of tomatoes and lettuce. We've been enjoying all of the greenhouse work as I back up over the trailer and knock it sideways. <laughs> I've really been enjoying it. it. Adds a little bit to do every single day and makes it so we get just an even bigger payoff when it's selling season. I think we're gonna dramatically increase our revenue by the end of the year. You can see here, we just barely made all of that fit on our uh, trailer here, but we got the honey, the eggs, and then all the greenhouse products. So lots of tomatoes, lots of lettuce, it's all going into storage. Uh, maybe slightly unrealistic to just have a whole bunch of tomatoes and lettuce sitting on regular pallets in a storage container like this. Like, you would definitely want to keep them refrigerated at the very least, maybe even frozen. But, uh, you know, we'll worry about that. Do a little count here. You can see we're getting close to capacity. 199 out of 250. So we'll definitely be hitting that considering our selling season is right around January, February. Oh, looking, looking real nice for selling season. What's nice about this add-on here is it shows me, for Harvest especially, how much extra you get from selling, right? So the contract itself pays 8,000. This is the base game. This is what it looks like, mostly. But you do this, and suddenly you see that you get that extra profit from Harvest of 2,800. 
not too much else to do with not doing those contracts this month, so we'll probably just be looking forward to harvest next month. But we have arrived in September of year three. We got another field to harvest here. Probably gonna run a little short on storage this month, so I'll have to start thinking about what I'm gonna sell right now, what I'm gonna wait on. Should be a busy month doing our regular harvest routine. Boy, it does look like we have our old favorite. Get this guy going here. Nearly $30,000 contract. One of my all-time faves. Oh, also, it appears he upgraded his, his equipment here. So this UI is kind of awesome for contracts. It shows you how much you've mowed the field. This goes up to 100%, and I think that contributes to 20% of this contract. Then it shows you the delivery. Also tells you how much more money you get from the harvest and what's the uh, profit per minute. All right, and we will get Balin going here. Probably should have started this first. Always the tank designated mower probably just have him do his thing on the two fields and get the massey ferguson bailing as soon as available there so while he's mowing as per usual we'll probably just be doing pallet work here although i'll probably get some more contracts started by the ai first if i'm wanting to do some of these other ones this is pretty neat uh expanding out our our farm hands here we got a lot of uh worker bees out right now this guy cultivating cultivating about to be cultivating mowing of course on our own farm productive day here's our boy here has finished up mowing one thing i think i'll do before i forget is just clean up the the little sections he he happened to miss there it's probably a good idea just get the massey ferguson bailing as well the thing is maybe i'll start getting the meadow lands there Let's see we'll just get each of these corners real quick not a terrible idea to just grab these oh it is a terrible idea to completely run your mower into the wall though <laughs> Would not recommend that. How far out into the road we can go, but we'll, we'll, like, we're able to go out at least for one pass. So I think I'll probably just do the one pass here, not worry too much about min maxing it. I think it's just a, another bale or two, doesn't hurt nobody. We'll do this, we'll fix the corners. Maybe do a pass on the other side too, because why not? The downside really is that the AI is just not, not going to be able to uh, grab this, but I can always just bale it myself. Let's do a pass on this side. Yeah, good enough. It doesn't even look like I'm getting uh, anything past that anyways, so probably not even really worth it to do this. Let's see how close we are on this uh, side down here, too. Can't quite remember where all the property lines are. Looks like this one goes pretty far, so all the way to the edge, more or less. Making some fantastic progress on those contracts while I'm doing this. Just great. I uh, really enjoy that Better Contracts add-on. End up doing a lot of contracts and I just heard about it from some random YouTube video or something and I decided to just give it a whirl and it is just great. For having doing contracts so much, it's just nice to have the organization. It adds a couple more that you can take out at the same time, which I don't think is too bad. I gotta pay the workers and the pay rate on them is not insane. It's just nice to be able to have more going while I'm active in the game doing my own harvest. So this guy can be cultivating this field at the same time and I'm paying him. How crazy am I gonna get here? I suppose we really sh could be mowing all of this every year. How much I want to do that. <laughs> because it's so such a low yield out here uh, when it's not on the field it's not fertilized it grows a lot more slowly i mean you can even see the windrows are just so much smaller we will just do one of these all look good i think i got everything cleaned up that i wanted to get cleaned up there anyhow so we'll get an ai going on that and i'll get it's probably a good idea to just go ahead and get the bailing started here probably get an ai on this one as well while i work on getting those contracts sorted out they do take a bit of management so i'm gonna have to hit some of this manually anyways for what i did around the edges so it's just nice to be able to have the uh at least a bit of it automated like in the cultivating contracts AI rarely has trouble with those, and they're just so simple. Whoa! <laughs> I love the tractor wheelie every time. It is so funny. It should be a very good month for us. I think that's might how I structure a lot of these things. Even if there's really juicy contracts out there, if I don't have anything to do for our own farm that month, I might just skip them, at least for the time being. Because I want to make some money, and I don't want to just be doing contracts that month. Because as much as I have enjoyed the contracts want to be making personal progress too in these series Let's see what else we got here um i guess we could do some of these seeding contracts that's not too bad yeah sure let's 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 get some sewing going pool is not compatible how does that make sense sir <laughs> 
This is borrowed gear. What do you mean the tool is not compatible, huh? I might just be abandoning that one. I don't know what else to tell you, man. You don't get charged or anything. We just collect and technically don't collect anything. And they don't charge you for taking the gear. So it's no, no big deal. Okay, so this guy wants barley. Meadow pass here. Clean up anything else. Then maybe uh, put this on the baler on the other field. Take over for the Massey Ferguson so I can do the pallet work, which I have yet to do this month. I was excited for last year's sale, made a lot of money, made a lot of progress on the farm, but I am really excited for this year's sale. It is going to be real big. Just adding that stuff with the greenhouse is massive, but in addition, getting the extra field. In the meantime, we've been, we've been steadily making some good money just with the side contracts while we're doing all this. Our bread and butter. I think we've got a pretty good little plan figured out here too. Saving those massive contracts for when we have a little more to do on our own personal farm. I like that a bit more. I think it keeps the flow going just a little bit better. It doesn't necessarily min-max my time. I don't think this challenge has really ever been about min-maxing the time. I'm not trying to speed run get into a billion dollars. I'm just trying to get there. I'm trying to do it in a uh, <laughs> entertaining way, but also a way that doesn't make me want to pull my hair out. <laughs> You need a little bit of A, a little bit of B, though. Uh, it is entertaining when somebody is messing up and not doing things perfectly, but that, that comes naturally to me. <laughs> uh, I had somebody ask on one of my videos when I think I'll hit a billion dollars. I'm thinking if, if I was hard-pressed, it'd be somewhere in the teens. It's hard to grasp how much more we're going to make once this all gets scaled up a bit. I'm already a lot more scaled up than I was when I first started, and I like to imagine that it only scales up further from there. We're still kind of in the starting stages of putting together our two fields, some starting productions, just little things like that. And it, it really escalates once you get a few things going. And I'm pretty excited for diversifying everything too. Still having a lot of fun with silage. I like baling and all that, but it's nice uh, to get a little bit of variety, especially when it comes to production chains. I'm very excited for those. You could probably get bale loading as well. So I think I will just get our pallets stored. Make sure chickens, greenhouse is looking good. Get right to bale loading. All right, got our pallets ready to go here. Get them in storage. So we got to figure out what we're going to sell and what we're not going to sell <laughs> when storage gets a little tight here. But I mean, I feel like tomatoes are the very clear loser already because they are only worth 284 a pallet. This is just purely based on storage. The best thing that can go in here is eggs at nearly $2,000 a pallet. And then silage at $651 per bale. Lettuce at $545 a pallet. Followed by honey at $435 a pallet. And then tomatoes with a lowly $284 per pallet. All this to say, if we run out of storage here, it is definitely tomatoes that go first. I gotta get these chickens some more food. We will do the very fun process of <laughs> lifting up the bags with a pallet fork there. Might as well use it up. Okay, just instantly used it. <laughs> what a what a harvest day. It's been a busy, busy day. I like it though. Busy means we're making money. I can already see that money going up even though we've been hiring hired help all day. Money's still going up. That's a good feeling. Oh, look at that. Storage officially full. All right. And now start selling some tomatoes. So we need to handle that. <laughs> kind of ASAP, actually. I think I'll have him go start loading up the bales while I get those tomatoes sold. Uh, he's about to wrap up, too. In fact, what's that looking? All right, one, right? Oh, my. They, they wanted a different crop, didn't they? <laughs> Oh no, barley! I did we. I knew this was gonna happen. That is honestly hilarious. Oh no! So can I even plant over top of that? Because if not, this is not even worth doing. That is honestly hilarious. So let me see. Am I able to plant the correct crop there? That is so funny. Oh man, I didn't notice until he was just about done. All right, let's look. Did that did that plant barley right there? It did not. So this. This contract was just a complete... I just paid a worker to do this all day. I, I literally just have to... I bet I did it on the other one, too, because they're both at zero. Oh, no. Okay, field 38. Yeah, he's been planting wheat this whole time. Okay, this was a complete waste of money on 
both of these. That is hilarious. That's what I get. I didn't check it. I just totally forgot. I bought seeds and just uh, planted wheat in both of them and they both wanted barley. So whoops. <laughs> and there's like no sense in uh, going back because they need to be cultivated again. <laughs> Whoopsies. That is hilarious. Oh, well, live and learn, I suppose. Wasted a bit of money there, but yeah, we're still we're still up on the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. We had to pay a few thousand for the seeds and obviously pay the workers to be doing that. It wasn't wasn't a crazy loss, so I can only be so upset. But definitely uh feel <laughs> feel special. <laughs> uh that is just too funny. Man, they they must be pissed at me. Uh hilarious. Alright, go get them bales, boy. An old army of AI workers. Scaring off people left and right, that's just what we do. Scaring off Farmer Johnson's daughter there. Hey, what you doing to my daughter? Why you almost run her over with your tractor there, mater boy? Yeah, Farmer Johnson knows he likes me and my maters. He loves my maters. Well, 3,000 in sold products. We are gonna need to take at least one more trip there. Only 15 more, so we are we are just gonna run out of space. I'm not sure we're able to uh, store those pallets with our current setup. We're just gonna fill up on silage when we're when we're thinking about storage here. I suppose I should I could get another shed. Could put another one down. Feels a little bit silly, uh, but I guess it's worth consideration. Another thing I can consider is just putting those on auto sell. You get 40% less. If I'm selling at the bottom of their price, which is pretty much what I'm doing with tomatoes right now, I don't know if having on auto sell is it's too much worse. At least for tomatoes. The other thing I might just do is just make it so we don't produce tomatoes because it doesn't. I don't really want them to take all these runs anyways. That's probably a good idea. Just to end that production. Oh man, we're double blocking traffic here. <laughs> we'll get out of the way. And he should be good now. Yeah, there you go, big guy. Based on what we're doing right now, I am just gonna convert this to all lettuce. I think that makes a lot more sense rather than buying more storage. Because I think we should be able to store our lettuce a bit more effectively. We're going to deactivate that and we are all lettuce now. I suppose we could get a little more storage. Uh, this is what we're gonna go with right now. Someone pointed it out to me that we could get these meadowlands easily and uh, i think they're right it's probably worth getting a few extra bales here and there i mean it adds a few thousand to harvest might as well not too bad yield wise i mean it's not nearly as good as the field is but it's not horrible either i mean we are filling up here yeah i think i'll try to do at least some of the meadowlands i might not cover the whole thing on my original homestead over there i'll get a decent amount of it and yeah i'm not trying to bale up their crops here their weeds Aid for the field, might as well uh, cut the whole thing too while we're at it. I just really thought the yield would be a lot lower than it actually is, because it's really not too bad at all. Thought it would be very, very low. Yeah, it's pulling up pretty well. A lot quicker to bale too, because the uh, windrows are a lot smaller. I mean, the yield is smaller too, but feels a lot better to move at 10 miles an hour, 11 miles, rather than four or five. <laughs> this is a nice part about letting the uh, AI bail that up. I don't have to deal with driving so slow. Not my favorite. Pretty good, uh, pretty good little yield here. A little swing her around. Back it up, Tyre. That's what I'd be telling my AI sometimes. Back it up, Tyre. Back it up. Throw that thing in reverse. But we only have 11 more storage spots, so I think we're gonna have to ditch something else. Probably the lettuce. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to figure something out for the greenhouse. Didn't anticipate running into this many storage issues, but here we are. So another one of these would set me back $29,000. Could literally just put it like right here. One for pallets, one for non-pallets. Wouldn't be too too bad. I'm almost definitely going to be adding more silage fields, so getting another storage container probably makes sense. It's going to bother me so much if they're not like right next to each other, which I feel like is inevitable. I mess it up somehow. That looks pretty good to me. I mean, look at that. That is looking fantastic. It costs us 30k, but I'm gonna need it eventually. And we're already hitting storage issues. And I shouldn't have sold all those tomatoes, but whatever. Doubled our storage already. I didn't think that would happen so quick. Uh, we are 100% gonna need it. Not sure why I jumped out the tractor. I was jumping for joy for my second uh, storage shed. Am I even scooping this up? 
No, I am not. So it doesn't seem like I can take anything. Right. So it's right at the property line is when I can't do it anymore. So I'm not 100% sure this side is worth cutting. I'll probably just skip that in the future since I can't bail most of it up. But doing the meadows definitely makes sense. At least when it's in a nice straight line like we have here. Yeah, might uh might end up just ignoring the corners a little more than I used to. They are annoying. <laughs> To do with this baler at least i dream i dream of the day we can upgrade from this baler and, and round bales that is not money i have to spare right now looking forward to it though i like having goals on the horizon like that field over there new baling setup after that the next goal is just being able to afford some new machines for new crops i think that'll make more sense once we have a few fields probably at least three or four and diversify a little bit until then it just makes no sense to do anything other than silage at least for the time being I think once we're able to get some of that equipment and get some of the production facilities that really make it pop uh, like if we were to do the bakery could get the the mill for turning our wheat into flour and then obviously the bakery itself for making bread for looking good anyways I mean there's a little patch here and there but I don't think it's enough for another bale should get one more as in we will we'll, we'll get one more harvest before selling season. I don't think it'll be a full harvest. It'll be a uh, three day growth, which will be a slightly lighter yield. But we still have a ton to sell over here. How's this guy looking? He's bail loading. Probably take over for him. Not much for the tank tractor to do right now. Single tractor kind of day from this point on. Might as well put the Massey Ferguson to work since it's already over there. Let's just dismiss this guy and we will get bail loading. I think uh, makes sense just to put this in the new storage shed and fill up the other one with the pallets as we get them just a little bit easier to offload since I don't actually have to put them on the ground like I do this problem with this is it unloads all 24 at the same time probably could have had these in a more convenient place but I, I like how uh, little farm looks here and real nice we're gonna have ourselves quite a selling season at the end of this year I mean look at these sheds filling up man are looking good this is uh this is just what i've been talking about oh porchery around the water they're gonna get battered by me driving through old man but yeah this is this is just what i've been talking about trying to just exponentially increase how much we're making this new field was a good step in the right direction i think another field so just slamming down another field and maybe even upgrading the bailing setup would be our next our next two purchases ideally it's the big field i don't know if that's be quite feasible still have a bit in loans less than 300k i think we're around 250k in loans and we have 50,000 in our pockets probably another couple harvests before i can uh, get the spare 370,000 for that field so it's 353,000 i get a little bit of a discount because she likes me i've done some contract work for I'm a trusted farmhand so they uh, you can actually build up a bit of a uh, repertoire with them get yourself a little discount just by doing contracts very nice Makes a lot of sense too. They're more likely to sell to you if you've worked for them a few times. I think we'll definitely have a bit more free cash flow after the sale. This is going to be a good one. We are just increasing our profit by so much by all these moves that we've made. Had to make some initial investments. The one bad thing we did last year was we bought those production facilities in the greenhouse and the chicken coop and the honey we had them put in right before their peak selling season so we didn't actually get too much of a yield and have just had to hold on to a lot of the pallets they've made since so i think now that it's been it'll have been a year since we bought those we'll see the full cycle of them and they'll start making us a ton of money uh because that definitely ate into a lot of what we made last year but i think things will be looking a lot better once we're able to sell all that as well and and our overall profit should just be a ton higher because of that. So we just got a few more little bales here. I should probably consider mowing a lot more of this because the, the meadow did give a lot more than I was expecting. This area I still might not do just because it's kind of a pain uh, maneuvering, especially the baler in this tiny little field area between all of my production facilities and the storage. But probably should at least at the bare minimum do what I did this year because I, I did get a handful of bales and probably half a trailer's worth that's really not too bad for just doing another pass look at all those marshmallows it does feel like we could easily fit another row up there but who am i to judge <laughs> 
think I can go too much further that way. We covered most of what we can right here. I think it's more our little field over there where we have some stuff put down is where if we want to do any extra mowing. That's where we're going to have to do it. Ooh, had a little bit of a ghost bail moment there. A little bit of a ghost bail moment. It happens to the best of us. One second you're loading bales, and the next second you're haunted by the ghost of dead grass from the past. Need to get me a farmer seance going out here. Cleanse the evil spirits from my silage bales. I think we could we could market these silage bales like it's a crystal ball or something for witchy girls. They'd probably buy it. Just a bale full of fermented grass sitting on the middle of their little seance tables. All them businesses they have in California. Tarot card reading, all that sort of stuff. You think they'd want a haunted silage bale instead of a crystal ball? I think they might. New business venture found. Instead of selling this to be fed to cows and stuff, I might look into some new markets. Potential there. That's the last of our bales, as I talk about just about nothing. <laughs> We're done. Oh, wait, you know what? I'm wrong. We got some fertilizing to do. We gotta fertilize both these fields and then we're done. Oh man, so I gotta I gotta swing this around even more if I wanna park it in my usual spot. And then we got the double storage. Double, double. Definitely should have had the tank tractor working on this while I was bale loading. We'll just have the one more harvest and then it's selling season, baby. My favorite time of the year. See the fruits of our labor. One downside of how silage works out is we have our selling season just so close to when the last harvest was. So the silage itself doesn't have a long time to ferment and actually get to where we need to need it to be. Only downside, but this rolls over into the next year, so it's not a huge deal. Oh man, you're just missing the tiniest little patch on the end. That is unfortunate. That's how it is with these really big work width things sometimes is uh they're amazing but sometimes you just miss the tiniest little strip here and you gotta do one of these the pass of shame <laughs> or you just get the tiniest little strip maybe it's not worth doing but i'm gonna do it at least you can change the work width on this thing that's why this fertilizer spreader is just so awesome one of my favorite pieces of equipment in the base game at least it just so small so lightweight still has a pretty decent capacity and the work width is just fantastic Plastic. Well, lime is the one downside. You need to get one of those uh, red spreaders for doing lime, but I mean, this thing in all other facets, so much better. And with how much you have to fertilize versus how much you have to lime, I mean, this thing is just always going to beat it out. I mean, he's talking about the fertilizer spreader again, isn't he? He just never shuts up about that thing. It's true. I, I you know, this is probably like the third or fourth time I've raved about this thing in this series. <laughs> It's kind of hilarious. Won't be the first time and definitely won't be the last time, brother. Can nearly do this thing in two passes. I lined it up a bit better maybe, but this, we'll just keep the line nice and straight. Not worry about the complete min-max. This fertilizer spreader got my back. Oh lord, here he goes again. <laughs> Always talk about fertilizer, that boy. He ain't right. Right on that one. Probably, probably I'm not right. <laughs> going on about fertilizer spreaders in a uh, simulator about farming. Let's be real, it's awesome, man, it's awesome. Yeah, so just one tiny little pass on the outside. We'll be good to go. Change our work width down to the smallest again, get it covered, and we are good for September. A very busy September, very busy. Lots of contracts, lots of failed contracts from accidentally planting the wrong seeds <laughs> in two different contract fields uh, to equipment just not working on some of the tractors they gave us. I, I still don't know what the issue was there. I didn't want to figure it out. <laughs> I'm just trying to go for the easy contracts there. I don't wanna I don't wanna diagnose what's wrong with your equipment setup. I just need money, man. Speaking of which, that bank account looking at 53,000, I mean that's good. Considering we spent 30k on another storage shed this month, that is so good. It's amazing. It means we had a crazy good month. Anytime we get that one contract for mowing the giant field, I know we're just gonna be making tons of money that month. Cause that one just pays crazy well. Alright, we are good to go. Look at that. Fertilize the deep blue. The deep blue. Every harvest month is just turning out to be a crazy one for us, but at the same time, that just means we are making a ton of money. So, oh, one little crash before the end of the month there. I'm sure my neighbor just has so many marks on his wall. <laughs> Uh, from all the tractors crashing into it. Oh man, did that guy really crash his tank into our wall again? That just has to be the worst house you could have in the entirety of Elm Creek. 
you're out front enjoying your garage pulling out and you just you just paying up and you got this dude right here oh man parking every piece of equipment he has six feet away from your family barbecue oh boy 